similar to this year's Final Four, what is ultimately better for college football in the long term? A revival of Blue Bloods or the rise of more Cinderella teams? And that's from College Station, Texas, by the way. It depends on what we mean when we say Cinderella. But let's just, for the sake of argument, say Cincinnati uh, 2021 was a Cinderella team. It was the first G5 team to ever make the playoff, right? So that's pretty Cinderella in nature. You could go all the way back to the Boise State team of 2008, I think it was. You could pick what you think Cinderella is, but I'll tell you what I think is ultimately the best for all of them. What's ultimately the best for the entire balance of college football is for programs with the advantage to take advantage. So I said that really fast, and it may not have made sense. So whether you are a blue blood to the core type fan, or whether you're the guy who pulls for the underdog and who constantly wants someone like Cincinnati crashing the party, you both need to agree with me. I think we have rare consensus on this, even if you don't realize it yet. So here's what I mean, because I think there, there's a perception that there's a lot of division on this answer. There's really not. There are, admittedly, a lot of programs in college football that the sport is tilted in favor of. Your traditional blue bloods, if you will. The best thing for competitive balance in college football is not for a random Cinderella to make a run amongst a few other giant blue bloods dominating the sport like we just saw with Cincinnati. The best thing for competitive balance college football is for the programs with the advantage to take advantage. I'm talking about Texas. I'm talking about USC. I'm talking about Miami. I'm talking about FSU. Because here's what happens. If you have a world in college football where instead of three or four legitimate tier one teams, you have 10 to 15 tier one or tier two teams, i.e. your blue blood crowd, and they're all performing at a pretty high level, chances are there is no monster amongst them because the talent has been distributed up. The level of play is too high across too wide a body of teams for any one, two, or three programs to put a death grip on the sport. And I'll tell you what that does. What it does is, number one, it just provides you more competitive balance. Number two, it provides you more competitive games. But number three, since you probably don't have any true generationally elite teams like 2019 LSU or 2020 Bama, if you don't have those, then you have what happened this past year and you have an environment that is ripe for upsets. And when you have an environment that's ripe for upsets, any given season, you have much more a favorable environment for a Cincinnati. This past year, everyone wanted to make the argument, yes, yeah, Cincinnati made it in, but everything had to fall perfect. I got news for you. Everything will always have to fall perfect for a G5 team to make it in. My question is, in what world is it more likely? Where you only have a few blue blood programs, but they're just totally and utterly laying waste to the sport? Or a world where all or most to all of the blue blood programs that have built in advantages are taking advantage of the advantage and therefore sort of leveling out tier one. And instead of having two or three elite teams and then a gap, you have maybe one elite team, but chances are more likely you have a bunch of really good to bordering on great teams that beat each other up. And any given year, you could have a veteran senior laden team like a Cincinnati that actually has a legit shot, not just to knock on the door of the playoff, but to actually do something, i.e. win a game in the playoff, which wasn't going to happen this past year. It's always going to be unlikely. Understand that. Uh, but also, I'll tell you what it does. What just happened to Cincinnati? Not just because of this past year, but what's happened to Central Florida? What's happened to Cincinnati? What's happened is what's supposed to happen. What's supposed to happen to the best G5 programs, the model that I love to see, is they consistently invest, they consistently perform at a high level, and because of that, they don't remain G5 programs they get snatched up by a Power Five conference. In this case, the Big 12 has snatched up UCF, has snatched up Cincinnati. Hats off to them, congratulations to them. Uh, so Matthew, I would argue that the best thing for college football is not for Blue Bloods to stumble. I think you want as many of them with their act together as possible because it ultimately stabilizes the environment in such a way that you never have runaway trains or very rarely do you have runaway trains.